And so you just been signing. <laughs> and then, then you finally look at the package, but they gone. And then you say, this ain't, this ain't mine, so you just put it over there in the corner. This ain't even mine. They won't even come back and pick it up. We, look, we got a package we've been trying to send back for almost a month. They ain't came back and got it yet. Praise the Lord. But we're going to keep that one. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I guess somebody was throwing a seed into us or something. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> All right. So we'll get divine what? Let, let, let's, see, let's see how, how good of a class you are. Divine what? Divine Definition. Definition. Divine what? Divine. Development. Divine what? Divine. Deliverance. Now, you get divine delegation. Divine delegation. When he says, I give you the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> no, hold on a second. You, God said, I give you my keys. Amen. <laughs> now, now, I have my keys right here. Now, if I, if I, if I, if I, uh, said to you, I give you my keys, and, and everything that I own is right here. I get I, My truck is here. My car is here. My boat is here. My house is here. Uh, what else? The church is here. Uh, what else? Oh, the jet is here. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The P.O. box is here. Everything I have is right here. And I say, I delegate to you the authority to go use anything I have at any time I have, you know, that is available to you because you have the keys. Amen. Now, now watch this. <laughs> Can I use it real quick? Now, <clears throat> if you got the keys to it, Many times the police won't even stop you. It's only when you jack it. It's only when you bust the guts out of it that they kind of get suspicious. But if you got the key to it, it would seem to them that you must have access to it. Right? Well, here, here's, here's Jesus with give, giving us divine delegation. He said, listen, I've given to you the keys to the kingdom of God. That this gives you access to anything that I have, anything that I own, if you just use the keys. Don't go through the window. <laughs> go through the door because you got the keys. And as a matter of fact, when you get in the house, turn off the alarm. Jesus is the password. But he gave us divine delegation. He said, I, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom. I give unto you the keys to the king, the keys to the kingdom. In other words, I give you keys to the throne room of God. Did you know you had that kind of authority, that kind of delegation right now? Yeah. That you got access right to the Father. Yeah. Hallelujah. You don't have to go to, 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 to somebody and say, could you help me get to, to God? No. No. Hebrews chapter 4. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter number 4. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 4. Look at verse number 16. Now, now, if you, had, if you had the keys to everything that I have, would you be timid about going into anything that the keys give you access to? <laughs> okay. Now, when we, have, when, we have, uh, when we have guests come over and stay over at the house, first thing Gwen and I tell them is, you at home. Okay. And... Uh, if you want something, go get it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's soda in the icebox. If you want something to drink, don't sit there and die of thirst when you can go right to the icebox and open it up and get a drink. Soda water. 
Praise the Lord. I would, you know, get a drink and sound like we're going to get a Budweiser or something. <laughs> no, no. We praise the Lord. You ain't going to find nothing stronger than Kool-Aid, really. Amen. And uh, so we give them. <laughs> so we tell them, you have the right to do it. So don't walk around here timidly thinking that, you know, you got to wait on us. Because when we go upstairs, we ain't coming down. <laughs> no, I, I told him, look, when we go upstairs, we ain't, we ain't coming down. We ain't coming down. Look, you're on your own. You got all that space down there to, to do whatever you want to do. Watch TV. You could do this. You could do that. It don't matter to us. Because once we go upstairs, it's over. So the wind is knocked out. <laughs> she is out. Praise the Lord. But we tell him to come to, to, to do it boldly. Watch this. Verse 16. Hebrews 4, verse 16. Watch this. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace or favor to help in time of need. Listen how the Amplified puts this. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of, of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help, and well-timed help coming just when we need it. So we don't have to walk around timidly with God. He says, come to him boldly. Why? Because he already gave you the keys. So we got divine definition. Divine what? Development. Divine what? And divine what? And lastly, we get divine dominion. <laughs> we get divine dominion. Look what he says. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loose also in heaven. Divine dominion. See, when, 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 when God initially created the world, he gave Adam dominion over everything. But because Adam got tricked, by the devil, by the enemy, he signed over his lease to the devil. But Jesus came back and snatched it back from him. And then he said, now, what Adam lost, I'm giving it back to you, that you have the authority to do whatever you need to do on earth. So I'm giving it back to you. So he said, look, whatever you bind, bind on earth has to be already bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth has to be already loosed in heaven. Question for you. Do you believe that there is sickness in, in heaven? Well, it don't have a right to exist right here. Amen. Amen. If, 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 if it's not happening over there in heaven, then it shouldn't be happening down here. And he said, I've given you authority over it. Do you believe that there's any lack in heaven? No, I, I can't be no lack in heaven because you say the streets are made of gold. I look, there ain't no lack. God can bump us off a curb. <laughs> we be all right. <laughs> so if there, there is no lack in heaven, we can have dominion instead of lack. It can't exist here. The point I'm trying to make is God has given us dominion. Not to dominate each other, but to dominate our situations and circumstances. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me take this time to, to, to emphasize this one point that I just said. We're not to dominate each other. Right. Amen. Come on now. Amen. There is no husband and no wife who should be dominating their mate. Right. Amen. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You should not be dominating your mate. Now, you know, before we would think that it was only men who were dominating women. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Because they got some women that will beat a brother down. Not, not just physically, but emotionally. Now, now, now what, what you mean by that? She will withhold intimacy from him just to beat him down. Come on now. Oh, see, it get quiet now. It get quiet. No, but I'm telling you, I, I, there, there are too many, too many believers who are like, you know, well, you know, uh, she, you know she punishes me by, not, by being, not being intimate with me. 
You know, it's been four, five years. I'm like, four, five years? That'd be a problem. Y'all need some serious. Come on, let's get some deliverance here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can I get an amen, brothers? Amen, amen, amen. What happens when I get revelation of the word? Watch this. What happens when I get the revelation of the word? Not just information, but revelation. Revelation will provoke adjustments in my life. Revelation will provoke adjustments in my life. Go to John 8. When I get a revelation that God requires giving from my heart, watch this now, it's going to provoke some change to come in my life. John chapter 8, look at verse number 31. John chapter 8, verse number 31. You ready? Look what it says. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on me, if ye continue in my word, then are ye, dis- you, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jump down to verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, then you are free indeed. So once I get a revelation of the word, then it frees me, it liberates me, it emancipates me. Amen. And it will provoke me to make some adjustments in my life. See, see, when you when you come here to this church and you hear this word, you can't leave here the same. No, you can try to shake it, you can try to shake it off, but you ain't you can't you look, you done heard the word, God is requiring it of you, and you gotta do something about your situation. Every man who come here, we tell him, look, don't you be messing with these women around here. Well, if you were messing with women at your last church, you all have to change. Yeah, you are. I'll bust you out and put you on TV, call your name, and then we'll put Michelle, make Michelle put the, your name in script. Yeah, we will. Yeah, don't play me. Just don't play me. Just don't play me. Amen. But you got to change it. It's going to provoke you. Look, you've been around godly women around this church. It's going to provoke you to make adjustments. Look, you might come here with a skirt way up here. (laughs) But once you be around these godly women over here, where they they, they, they living for God, they're holy, then all of a sudden your, your skirt start dropping a little bit, and they start dropping a little bit, and they start dropping a little bit. Why? Because it provokes you. To make adjustments. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It provokes you. We, we, we were just talking uh, on Thursday night in our, in our men's meeting that, uh, uh, you know, being here and seeing godly men, seeing men who love their wives and love their families, oh, it changes you. I, I, I see changes in brothers all the time. You know, I see brothers going to open the door for their wives now. <laughs> thank, thank you, sis. I will come on. Give you, give you a high five over here. Give me a high five right here. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Why? Because they see a godly example. Now, now, pastor wasn't always like that. Mm-mm. It, it came. Pastor had to get revelation. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Sister Gwen, you better get in. I had information. I had, inf- I had all information I need to know. But the information was telling Sister Gwen, look, girl, you better get in quick, because I'm about to go. <laughs> you playing around, look, you, you talking, look, you better cut the conversation, because I'm, I'm ready to go, I'm in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means, huh? You, I'm ready to go, and I'm ready to go right now. But then I got a revelation. <laughs> I got a revelation. That I need to be chivalrous, you know. I need to, I need to, I need to treat my woman like the woman she is, amen. Cause guess what? Ain't no woman like the one I got. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. Yeah, ain't no woman like my woman, amen. Praise the Lord. So I had to, I had to, I had to get the revelation that I had to go and open the door for. And now she, you know, she done got spoiled. Now, you know, she, even when she's driving, she's standing there. <laughs> 